we're gonna talk about a few things today the inversion of a lot of things because the thing is a lot of people impose dominance here through intellect and this to me is the inverted way of basically knowing because see the way I'm observing things is the more aware you are here the less you are aware spiritually okay and then the more people are aware spiritually the less they are aware here that's why sometimes I've watched interviews with certain people who are way too into the you know uh metaphysical side of things they come across as like crazy or they come across as like weird you know and I feel like that there has to be some type of balance because you're still having an experience here when you go toward one way too much, you you end up losing yourself there. And I've already made the video that I just put out on basically losing yourself in the in the lights or the false lights or whatnot. And basically just going into a space where you lose touch of this reality. You're losing touch of yourself still at the same exact way. Because this reality is still you. Even though it is not the reality. It's only reality because you believe in it. So it becomes your actual reality. So people say in actuality. You know, everything here, in order for you to become somebody, because you know what, this is how you, I, I've, I've, I watched a live uh, on one of my favorite channels, The Crucible. And, um, you know, he was debating a, a guy who was ultra religious. And, um, you know, they got into the topic of hypnosis and past life regressions and whatnot. And I've got videos where I spoke on that. And I'm going to make more videos on that because that's actually an interesting topic. But with the hypnosis part, it's basically discredited as something that uh, is not, it's not uh, applicable here in this reality. But, you know, the medical industry discards that treatment as a form of you trying to... Uh, Heal somebody, let's say, if that's the word we want to use. But the whole thing is when you really look at your reality, you're actually under a hypnosis as we speak. Believe it or not, you're operating every day on autopilot. Uh, sometimes you may do things and don't even know why you do them. You act like a character and don't even know why you act like that character. In other words, you don't know or have an awareness of anything. You're just running on programs you picked up from the ages of one through seven when you were really in a deep hypnotic state. And this is actually proven that a child is is more or less under a hypnotic state through the ages of one through seven. That's why they're easily uh, molded. That's why the Jesuits said, give me a child from the ages of one through seven and I'll show you who the man is. And that's because, you know, the same way Andrew from the Crucible said, uh, you know that it that that it's been proven that you can implant memories or implant certain things into people's minds uh you know through this method of hypnosis or past life regressions and whatnot and that's absolutely true you know it is absolutely true this is when it's used in a way where uh the weapon is used against you rather than uh for you and the whole thing is you can do this yourself or you can have others doing it for you this is why you have to have a certain level of trust between you and the person that you are actually being hypnotized by but in actuality, everybody you're listening to is implanting certain things into your mind that you come out later on and saying, uh, you, you use as, as concrete truth to say this is truth. When in actuality, those were just implanted in your mind as a mind virus. They festered and grew and all of a sudden now they become a belief system and you think that they're true. Sort of like your entire human existence. Little pig, little pig, little pig. See, here, here's the thing. You could even look at entrepreneurship. You could look at anything. Anybody that speaks to you about self-development, right? They'll tell you that you have to become what you think about. In order for you to become an entrepreneur, right? Or be an entrepreneur, you have to become an entrepreneur. In order for you to have a million dollars and be able to manage that money, you have to become a millionaire. You can't just have a, a million dollars without being a millionaire. You don't get to keep that money. You'll end up losing it somehow, Right? Everything requires you embodying a character, but it requires you working on yourself first, knowing who and what you are and what you're channeling as energy for you to be able to actually wield the power of what you're trying to do out here. Whether it be uh, being a magician or a religious je uh, zealot or whatever it may be, you have to become that character first. And that requires a level of self-development 
self-actualization and that only happens through self-hypnosis but the whole thing is you don't get lost in the character because a lot of people say i am a hypnotist i am a vegan i am a uh, a religious person i am the, behind the i am you're none of those labels they're just labels see the whole key to this is being aware of the fact that you're none of those things in actuality right so your reality is something you enjoy no different than if you're going to look at the layers of light and the layers of things you engage in out here, right? Luxury, the measure of light is where you get the word lux, luxury, right? You basically look at that extent of experience. You have to become abundant or a, abundant consciousness for you to actually be able to enjoy the abundance that actual life gives you. Like private jets, you know, Lamborghinis, Ferraris and whatnot. You can be getting close to there by actually networking and actually knowing people that are there. You can start by, instead of saying, you know, you have a million dollars, you can say, I actually have access to a million dollars through network. Or it may be where you just built credit here and you're basically, you're in your existence, you're credible. And don't, th don't think that anything outside of you is separate to you. All these things are you. You're just connecting with aspects of yourself. You know, when you look at, for example, the kingdom of heaven is within you, right? And you start to ask yourself, what is that? What is that abundance? Where is it? Right? The actualization, the realization is knowing that your experiences are actually right here as we speak. The kingdom of heaven is right here. And the actual kingdom that you seek is right in front of your face the entire time. We can look in, we can look at family, we can look at the see this is the thing. When you polarize to an idea, and I made a video on how this system is set up through movements, when you have something attached to your heart, okay, you you polarize to it, but you hold it to your heart so wholeheartedly that it's it's like in, there's an imbalance here where it can come from a space of love or it can come from a space where you have an agenda and it's just basically a business. Because again, Everybody always says mind your business, right? The minding your business is just basically knowing that your business is your universe that you inhabit here on the planet. But these labels, you're not any of these labels. And the fact that you limit yourself to say you're one of these labels, you are basically limited because anybody can attack those labels. I can attack a vegan activist and dismantle his whole entire paradigm. And I basically just killed him because he associated with that uh, idea of being vegan. See, the whole thing is people say, oh, in order for you to debate, you have to have a stance on something. I have my stance on things. I have my ideas about things. But I'm also open-minded and malleable where it's uh, subject to change. Kind of like any contract. In order for you to save yourself, you can actually make your disclaimers but say, uh, these things are subject to change. Well, you let the person know that in an instant it can change and you can't do anything about it. So... In actuality, in my paradigm, anything is subject to change. In fact, everything in the universe is moving and changing. Nothing stays still. Everything's always expanding. And that's that's basically where I am residing right now. It's just an expansion. And I do this through networking. It could even be in the form of debate. It could be in the form of anything. It's expansion. You know, when we look at family, I'll get back to that topic real quick. Your family is your immediate mirror and, and, and reflection of yourself. You get what I'm saying? But when you're in Christ consciousness, your family is basically everybody you know of in your reality. Because you are what you attract. Your vibe attracts your tribe. And this is why whenever you come in contact with anybody, and there may be people you like, there may be people that trigger you. The people that trigger you are the ones that you're supposed to look at closely and actually find those to be the blessings in disguise. Because when you look at it, in your now moment, you're already at the position with God, one with God. There's people who say, I'm trying to ascend with God. I'm trying to get to God level. I'm trying to get this. You always stay at that space because you're always just in that frequency of trying to get somewhere. You think that when you die is when you actually reach nirvana. And you can actually have that death now. And that's basically that disconnect. And this is the reason why people actually cannot die in peace. Because in their mind, they think that when they die, they're leaving their family behind. Things that they never finished. Projects that are undone. Like, for example, anything they've been working on. Uh, problems that were never solved with family members, let's say, or anything like that. But when you die, you die. 
and everything that you know of is you so when you die you die everything dies there's nothing outside of you this is why this whole illusion of people saying that they're trying to find life in other planets and i was going to make this in a separate video but i may as well try tie it in here but finding life in other planets you are basically the earth that you are projecting into existence that's why you reflect on life right it's even a mirror of yourself the same thing the universe is made of carbon oxygen hydrogen and nitrogen is what you're made of the same way that your body is made of a certain amount of water is the same way the planet earth is made of a certain amount of water then when you look at the sun the sun is your consciousness right you could look at the animalistic sides of you the the the, the darker realms the feminine aspect you look at the moon and whatnot but, but why is it that we are here in this space right now on Earth, right? We're looking at the planet, we're looking at the sun, and we are observing the direct reflection of ourself. How attached are you to the actual experiences you're having here? See, if, 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 if for example, in order for me to be a vegan, I have to be attached to that philosophy. I have to fall in love with that philosophy, but it's coming from an ego space, right? Where... I fight for animals. I fight for this. I fight for that. But I'm holding that as a badge. It's it's tightly close to my heart. So I have to wear a badge and go out and start trying to convince people to change that. Right? Or you can actually have a realization that those animals really don't belong in your body. And you don't even really need them. Hell, you could even get to a point where if you really are trying to embody doing less harm or trying to not hurt anything in life. There's veganism, there's carnivorism, but then there's breatharianism. See, you, you can't convince a vegan to become a breatharian, though. It's not tangible for them. And, and if you look at, for example, it's the same way where if you try to convince a carnivore to be vegan, it's exactly the same thing. Those things equate with each other. The, go try to convince a carnivore to be a vegan. He said he'll die and wither away. A vegan says, no, you can sustain yourself. There's plenty of protein in certain vegan animal and vegan products that you don't require animal products. Bunch of studies they'll come out with, right? But then you try to tell a vegan to become a breatharian, they'll give you the same exact response that the carnivore gave you from being a, 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 a vegan. But that's, again, attached and trying to be sustained in the physical. Your body, you can actually make your body in any type of way you want. Mind over matter. I can actually grow by breathing air. Or just having liquid, basically through through fruits or whatnot. And the only reason I do even do juices and whatnot is because I grow so much fruit that if I don't juice it, they'll end up going bad. But in actuality, you have to see exactly how your digestion and everything works. Everything just moves and flows so much easier without any pushing or without any uh, violent cleansing. It's just it just kind of falls out. Let's just say that. So your insides change to a point where things that don't belong in there just fall out because you changed the information going in. And, 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 and because now you're actually neutralizing chemistry where you're basically creating a balance between acids and alkaline. In your exterior world, what doesn't serve you will just fall out. You don't have to get rid of anybody. You don't have to push anybody away. People will just fall out because you changed yourself. You changed the chemistry of how you react to things. What type of chemistry do you put into things that you actually engage in outside of yourself? Because if you're eating bad foods, as within, so without, you're only creating a, a chemistry for disaster. So if I was attached, let's say, to a doctrine, then it's closely related to my heart. You know what I'm saying? So a vegan may ask you, well, you know, why would you not kill your dog, but you're okay with killing a pig? Well, the dog is obviously living in my house and it's closely attached to my heart. So obviously I'm going to prioritize the dog over the cow that I have no idea of. Right? Now, I'm not for or against animal abuse. And this may sound in a way where if somebody wants to debate, you know, I would, I would save that arsenal for you. But they say, well, you know, that's inconsistent because, you know, what would, why would you care about the, the, the dog but not the welfare of the pig outside of you? So you're paying for it. So you're okay with paying for it, but once you know what happens, right? But at the end of the day, everything in this reality is operating from a space of your perception of good and bad. So my family, obviously, is no different than the people that I meet outside of myself. The only thing is my family is 
my immediate family and they're closer to my heart space but in actuality when i die they don't exist it's no different than if i went to sleep had a dream and seen people there because i've had dreams with people i've never even seen in my life and i wake up did they ever really exist did it ever really even matter there was a, one, a, one dream i had where i was around a bunch of water the waters were still but i was hanging out with somebody that i intimately was like if i knew him forever but i i wake up i'm like i don't even know who the fuck is, who that dude was the face and everything i don't know who that dude was here you're basically in a frequency of either man or woman you're either black or white Whichever it may be, whatever you were vibrating to is what you expressed yourself here as. The people in your life that are closest to you are the ones that are attracted to you because based on what frequency you were as a spirit or as a soul, right? And then you're here. Do you reincarnate? See, I don't. I, I those are all belief systems. They're all uh, programs. And if you believe in it, it's it's more real to you. It exists. But the whole thing is, is that. The same way you can have reoccurring dreams, the same way if I go to bed and I'm watching a scary movie, my brain or my experience here, I'm not going to know if it was a real or fake experience, so I had to process that, right? So upon going to bed, I may process that reality, but it's still part of the mental realm. Once you go into deeper layers, how strong is your awareness to be able to pass that mental realm where things don't even look like you're programmed to believe they look here? You know, you think fire looks like fire, water looks like water, or even light looks like light. People look like people, they're mental constructs. I made the example of man created in the image of God. You're looking for life in other planets. The reason that this earth has life in it is because you woke up and you collapsed everything into existence. So you're looking at mirror of yourself, the sun, the water, the land, the people, everything. It's exactly what's going on within you, even the elements. You can look at the bacteria and viral world, the E. coli universe. All equates to your actual reality here. If you look at the video on the ISIS thesis, which I'll link in the description of this video, she's going to speak on a specific section where she equates the E. coli universe with your universe. It's exactly the same thing. Start looking at the hermetic principles then. You say the mind is all, the universe is mental. Right? The law of polarities, the law of gender. Right? So, it all makes sense. It's not something you have to like be a rocket scientist or go to school for. I mean, it just makes sense when you're observing your reality. So, if I'm looking for life on planet Mars, planet Pluto, whatever it may be, or I can find life the moment that I just get there and inhabit it. But they think you have to leave the planet. Well, you're not going to leave the planet. You can't leave Earth. The reason, you, you, the, the same way... I just told you, you're experiencing your reality as a mirror reflection of your heart, right? This earth is your heart. When you get out of body, you cannot physically get out of body. That's a, that's a metaphysical experience. And through awareness, if you maintain a calm, normal state of emotions, mentally, spiritually, and physically, you can maintain yourself there in that, in that state longer. But the more excited, the more scared, because people are afraid to stay out of body. It's actually harder to stay out. It's easier to pop back in the body and it's harder to come out. But when you come out, right, the coming out experience, if you're going to leave this earth, the same way you leave this earth is going to be the same way you get out of body. It's not going to be through a physical experience. But how do you inhabit all these other planets? It's as easy as just a blink of an eye. That's it. Finding that planet within yourself it only exists because it exists in you otherwise it wouldn't exist you may find things that nobody ever knows of on this planet in fact the longer you stay by yourself without outside interference or or influences the more you can actually generate your own thoughts but when you're hanging out in, in environments and talking to too many people and hearing too many points of view then you may find yourself believing in things only because you've heard them from somewhere else pass me down info so you can actually because people say thoughts are not yours but you can actually generate a thought nobody's ever thought of you can find out things that nobody in this planet ever knew of you can meet gods that nobody ever knew of deities nobody ever knew of what is this called you're now in tune with god mode because and the universe because the universe is only expanding right
The universe is only getting bigger, evolving, moving. What are you doing when, you, when you're sitting in your space disconnected from the environment, right? You disconnect from the environment. Now you start to actually have a, more of your own thinking. You're thinking for yourself now. We are here and to be conducive, we have man-made laws, right? But only because you need laws, you need religion because you don't know yourself. If you knew yourself, you wouldn't think to hurt anybody else outside of you. If you knew yourself, okay, you would actually treat every single person as if it, if it was your own family member. You would treat others the same way you would treat yourself. They teach you this in the Bible. Treat your neighbor as you would yourself. Why? Because your neighbors are you. They, they don't just say that about your family members. They say neighbors. Why? Your neighbors are your actual family. But in, a, in an instant too, family, when you don't know yourself, are a big distraction. And people say, I don't have time. I have to work. I have to do... It's just like, you know, fitness. You know, people think they need like three hours to go to the gym to be fit or to get in shape or to be healthy. Healthy is a mind state for one. And two, 10 minutes is better than doing nothing. People think that you have to be meditating for five hours to be more spiritual. And you, it could be as simple as a five minute or two minute little disconnect from the planet that goes a long way. You know, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, what you do, but how you do it. Because if you think about it, there's people who work out for three hours. And if they don't have a certain structure or strategy, I mean, they're just going in there wasting time. In, in, in an instant where you close your eyes, let's say I can go to the gym and I'm a very knowledgeable person. I can have a very structured workout. I do more in the gym in 30 minutes than somebody doing three hours in the gym of a workout doing absolutely nothing. Only because I was structured, focused, and I just basically had my mind to muscle connection. So your heart brain coherence when you're meditating is the key to strengthening this muscle. And the more you actually do this, you'll find your own strategies on how to get into this space where a five minute to two minute little prayer can actually go a long way, you know? And it's not nobody telling you how to do it. You find the how part, you know? But then your mind, which is your dragon, your ego or whatnot, will convince you that you're wasting your time. It's not working, nothing's happening. Even when you're awake, you're doing nothing. In fact, the most dangerous people are the ones that are still in silent, even with their eyes open. This is why God said, be still and know that I am God. I made the example. If you're in an environment that's uncharted territory, like when I told you I went to California, I hung out with like billionaires. Be still and know that I am God is you basically keeping your mouth shut, observing and let the environment influence you, right? Without actually losing yourself though. And be still and know that I am God is you looking at the people, places, and things, the environment, that's God. Be still and let God take the wheel. That's the environment actually influencing you. And if you're aware, you'll know if you're in an unfavorable environment or a favorable environment. Not to say that only because it's a rich environment, it's favorable. Because even in that, there's layers to it. You could be around drug dealers. And there's a lot of money in abundance. But is it ever really backed up by a space of love? Or is it backed up by, let's say, uh, a virtuous work? Like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk soon.